Hello and welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how we connect external devices such as LEDs and push buttons to the Raspberry Pi Pico and then use interrupts to determine the status of the push button and then use that status to flash or to change the status of the LED. The circuit itself is very simple as is the program, so let's dive right in. The circuit that I have here uses two LEDs, one that I call LED1, which is a white colored LED on my circuit board, and another one that I call LED2, that's actually a green LED. Both of them are wired to GPIO pins using a current limiting 330 ohm resistor, which I've called R1 and R2 respectively. The first LED, the white one, is hooked up to pin uh, GPIO 16, and the green LED is hooked up to GPIO 15. In addition, we've connected a simple switch, a push button switch, between GPIO 17 and ground. That's it, Three, uh, uh, five simple components, uh, basic connection. So let's uh, take a look at what that connection looks like um, on the breadboard. So if you look at the breadboard, I've basically got um, the two LEDs, the white one and the green LED. And you can see that they're connected using these current limiting resistors that are actually there. And then I have this push button that's connected to pin uh, GPIO 17. Fairly simple circuit, nothing that we should be too concerned about. And so uh, let's now dive into the code. Uh, before that, I'm gonna plug my, uh, my, my Pico in. So just give me a second for that. All right, my Pico is now plugged in and uh, ready to go. So we're in the code. The one thing you'll probably notice when you look at my code is uh, I, I no longer use Visual Studio Code. I actually switched uh, about a week ago to Goland, uh, which is an IDE from JetBrains. And Goland actually has a really nice TinyGo plugin. And when I get some time one of these days, I'll put an article on my website uh, that includes uh, instructions on how to set up Goland to work with TinyGo and the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's not really very complex. It's about the same level of complexity as Visual Studio Code, but due to some weirdness with the plugin, there's a couple of configuration settings that you have to do manually in order to get type hinting and all of the hints that show up inside of the IDE. But other than that, everything actually works really well inside of Golan, and I, I'm actually liking the IDE quite a bit. All right, so let's get started. As always, um, you know, a simple Go program. So we start with our package. So we'll go with package main again. Um, and then uh, let's just start with our main function. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, in this function, I'm going to basically start with uh, initializing my LEDs. So we've got the first LED, which is uh, connected to pin GPIO uh, 16. Um, and you can see how the Goland ID is also working like VS Code, where it actually is giving me type hinting, and in addition to that, doing the auto imports, which is really cool, I kinda like it. Um, all right, so we've, we've set up the LED, let's configure it. Um, pin config, uh, machine dot pin config and uh, we're gonna set up a mode, and the mode for this is machine.pin output. All right, so that takes care of the first LED's configuration. Then we'll set up the second LED, which is a green one that I'm just gonna keep flashing to show you that there's a whole bunch of things happening in the processor, even while we are just waiting for an interrupt. So we're not actually polling or anything, we're just waiting on an interrupt. So anyway, let's set up the second LED. Um, this one is connected to GPIO 15, so that makes that easy. And we'll configure it uh, with a um, mesh, machine if I could type right today um, connected to a machine dot pin config uh, we'll put a mode in there again of machine dot pin output okay so that's the second LED um, and now let's configure our push button so we'll call it button and that one is connected to GPIO 17 
And here we're going to do something when we configure it. So let's do button.configure, machine.pinconfig, um, and we'll set up a mode. But here there's something interesting. When we set up the mode, we're going to set it up as machine.pin input pull up. And what does that mean? Um, I've actually got some details about what pull up resistors do in the article uh, that accompanies this video. And I have a link to that article in my description below. So please go visit my website, look at that article, and you can read a little more. But just to give you a quick summary of what pull up resistors are, um, when you have a GPIO pin that's configured for input, unless that pin is connected to some value, so unless it's connected to a logic high or a low, there is a chance that the pin could float. In other words, its value could sort of flip between high and low depending on things that the processor is doing, depending on electromagnetic interference and stuff like that. In order to prevent that and to have a deterministic input, we tie that pin either to the voltage supply or to ground and we call uh, and we tie it through a resistor, a current limiting resistor, and we call that either a pull-up resistor if the pin is tied to high voltage or a pull-down resistor if it's tied to ground. In this case, I've actually, I'm going to use a pull-up resistor and the Pico very conveniently has internal pull-up resistors or actually they're pull-down or pull-up resistors that of about 50 kilo ohms each that are connected to each pin. So we're just going to use the internal resistor on the pin and configure it to be a pull-up resistor. And that's what this simple command uh, mode machine dot pin input pull-up actually does for us. So we've, we've now configured, um, okay, I forgot I did something here. Um, so we've now configured our button to be a pin input pull up. So it's it's basically going to be always at a logic high until the push button is depressed, at which point the pin will be pulled to ground and register a logic low. Okay, now that we've created, we've set up the three peripherals that we've connected to the Pico, we've set up two LEDs and a button. Uh, let's now set up an interrupt service routine. So the way we do that in uh, TinyGo is to use um, this uh, function called set interrupt and it takes two arguments the first is what is called a pin change and the other is a callback function so let's first write the pin uh, the pin change and so the pin change event actually has two va possible values it's either got machine dot pin falling which represents a falling edge of the trigger so remember when i press the push button it's going to take the pin high which is a rising edge. And when I release the push button, it's going to actually take the pin back to, uh, well, sorry, when I push the pin push button, it's going to take the pin low because I had it pulled up and the push button connects it to ground. So it's going to take the pin low. At that point, I'm going to get a falling edge on my, on my signal. When I release the push button, that pin goes back high and that is a rising edge on the signal. So what we are interested in is actually on to, to listen for an interrupt using both edges of that pin. So we're going to set this up with a machine.pin falling or machine.pin rising. So now we're listening to both uh, the falling edge as well as the rising edge of the pin when it changes state and we're interrupting the processor based on those two states. The callback function itself, for now, let's just define an anonymous function, and that uses, um, that basically uses a pin, uh, and we'll just call it P, um, and write our callback function. And what are we gonna write in the callback function? Really, it's a very simple command. So we want to read the status of the pin, either high or low, and set the LED to the inverse of that. Because remember, when I push the push button or press the push button, the pin is getting pulled low. And what I want is at that point, I want the LED to be switched on. When I release the push button, the pin goes back to high and I want the LED to be switched off at that point. And so what I'm really looking for is the inverse of the state of the pin. 
And so all we're doing is we do a command led.set and set it to the inverse. So we have the exclamation sign uh, of the pin dot get. So pin dot get gets you the status of the pin, uh, higher or low. We invert that and set the LED uh, to that. That's it. I mean, it was that simple to set up our interrupt service routine. Now that we set up the interrupt service routine, uh, let's just write a simple me uh, program that really doesn't do anything, but just, you know, it blinks that second LED on and off so that one, the program doesn't exit. And two, it also shows us that something else is happening while the processor is waiting on an interrupt. And then when the interrupt occurs, the processor goes to process the interrupt using what, what is called this interrupt service routine, this function that we've defined. Uh, and then it goes back to uh, basically doing what we told the processor to do, which is what an interrupt should be, right? You're doing something, something interrupts you, you go take care of that interrupt, and then you go back to regularly scheduled programming. All right, so we'll just write a simple function, uh, I mean, we'll just continue with a simple for, infinite for loop um, that just blinks that second LED over and over again. We've done this countless times in my videos, and so we're just going to um, write this up. So time dot millisecond, and then we'll take the LED to uh, low, and we'll make it sleep again for 500 milliseconds. That's it. It's that simple. Uh, we've written our for loop, we've written our program, and that is all we need to do. All right, so now let's put the uh, Pico into its uh, into the file system mode and flash the Pico with this program that we've written. Um, so I put the Pico into file system mode. I'm going to now flash this program. And the way we do that very easily inside of uh, Golan is to actually right click on this little green arrow that you're seeing here, which indicates where the application run point is, is, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's basically pointing to function main, which is truly where the run point of a Go application is. So we right click on it and we just do tiny go flash and we're going to flash it. It's going to bring up uh, tiny go and it's gonna to attempt to flash it. So it finished flashing, it exited with an exit code of zero. And now let's go to the, um, to the camera to look and see what uh, we've got on, going on on the Pico. Okay, so now when you look at my Pico, you've got, you can see the green LED that's basically flashing now, and it's flashing, you know, with a time period of uh, one second. And we've got this push button that, if everything goes well, it should basically illuminate this LED when it's pushed and it should switch off the LED when it's, uh, when it's not pushed. Okay, so let's press the push button. There you go, LED is on, I release the push button, LED goes off. Remember, this green LED is still flashing while all of this is going on. So LED pushed, uh, I mean the push button pushed, LED on, push button released, LED off and away you go, right? Over and over again, LED, the green LED keeps flashing. That was it, a very simple program, a very simple circuit to show you how you can connect peripherals to the Pico, to show you the use of an internal pull-up resistor to tie an input pin to a high value, and finally, to show you how to write a simple interrupt service routine that listens to the status of a pin or is interrupted uh, at, by the, a status change on a pin and is able to take some simple action at that time. More information is obviously on my website, uh, links in the description. Please uh, feel free to uh, view my, or read my article on my website. Um, you, you can always post comments on the website or post comments here on the video. I would love to get some comments to see how you guys feel about uh, these videos that I'm doing on TinyGo and the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, some encouragement or some criticism, everything is welcome. Um, if, you, if you would, please subscribe to my videos or to my channel so that you get notifications of other videos that I'm doing. 
that's it then and uh, let's talk a, a second here about what I'm going to talk about next time. So the next time we leverage what are called go channels uh, and, and use them to concurrently do a bunch of things on our Pico. That's it for today and I look forward to talking to you guys in the next video. Thank you.